and today we're going to be talking about insulation. And I'm not talking about the insulation in your house. I'm talking about the insulation as in the radi radiation from the sun. That insulation. Hence the different spelling. Um, if you look at the two words, insulation, as in your, like, your house, is spelled with a U. Insolation, this one, is spelled with an O um, after the sun. So, what is insulation? It's the radiation that comes from space. It's the incoming solar radiation. Um, and what's interesting about insulation is when it goes from one medium to another, so say air to water, it refracts. So you know how if you're looking at a beam of light and it enters water and it seems to bend, that's refraction. Or if you try and stick your hand in to water and touch a fish, you miss, that's refraction because what you're seeing isn't actually where it's at. The water bends light um, as we see it. So let's let's talk about albedo and reflection. And these are two things that go hand in hand. Albedo and reflection are what help keep the earth cool and warm at the same time. Because a lot of Earth's insulation, um, a lot of the energy that hits the Earth is reflected back, actually. Um, and what's not reflected back absorbs. So the reflected part of it, um, the insulation that bounces back into space, is reflection. So the stuff that isn't is absorbed into our our systems down here. Now the albedo um, is the reflection rate, how well it reflects. Darker colors have lower albedo, that means it doesn't reflect well. While lighter colors reflect very well, they have a high albedo. So on the left we have a blacktop road. This road is not going to reflect well. If you have ever walked on blacktop in the summer, I've done it, it is very hot, it hurts, <laughs> it's not a good idea. Um, and that's because it doesn't reflect, it absorbs the heat. That's why you don't wear black shirts during the summer. Um, now as for the snow, snow and ice reflect back up into space because they're white, They, the color doesn't absorb as much energy as black does. Um, you have to remember there's a spectrum of colors and each each color has a different reflection rate, has a different absorption rate. And that's something you have to remember. Um, but basically the lighter the color is, the more it's going to reflect. The darker it is, the more it's going to absorb. Now how do clouds play in to um, insulation and temperature, things like that. Um, well, what clouds do is they regulate the temperature because the top of the clouds bounce the insulation back up into space while the bottom of the clouds bounce the heat and the energy back down to the earth. So basically what it's doing is it's insulating the earth. It's regulating it. It keeps the lower, it causes lower daily maximums and it causes higher nighttime minimums. <clears throat> Essentially, what our clouds are is a blanket. Keeps the cold out, keeps the warmth in. That's what they are. Think of it like that. All right, so let's talk about insulation and daily temperature because a lot of people would assume that when the temperature is the highest, well, that's when the radiation is the highest. And that's actually not true because it takes a little while for the insulation to process 
through the Earth's atmosphere and to be radiated back into the air temperature. So what you have is called a lag. And this lag shows up. So if we look at our little diagram here, um, you would think that at the 967 time period, or insulation, um, which is at 1400 hours, so 2 o'clock in the afternoon, that that would be the highest temperature of the day, but it's not. The highest temperature of the day is actually at 4 o'clock at um, 116 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's because of the lag. It takes a while for that insulation to be processed into actual heat to be radiated back out. Um, same thing when it comes to cooling. Go up to the 0600 hour. We have 11 um, watts per... I forgot my units, guys. That's bad of me. It's very bad of me. Yeah, I forgot my units. Um, I can't remember what they are. Um, but we have 11. So we have insulation coming in. So you think it would be warming up. But look at the temperature. It's actually colder than it was in the previous hour. That's because it takes a little while for the earth to start rewarming. Oh. All right, let's go to shortwave radiation, which is where I really should have what that translates out to. And I don't, because my brain decided to die. Yep. <laughs> so, shortwave radiation is insulation, okay? It's what's coming into the earth. And there's an average amount of what is coming into the earth. And that is 1,373 watts per, I'm going to say that's meters squared, guys. Um, so this is a solar constant. This is like your average for the entire day, OK? Now, 26% of that radiation is going to be reflected back out into space. Um, as it enters the atmosphere. Nineteen percent of that radiation is absorbed by water molecules in the clouds. Four percent of that radiation is reflected by the Earth's surface. But what happens if one of those numbers changes? Now if you're in a physical geography class you might have a teacher have you do a lab like this. So I kind of simplify the formula um, so what you do is you take 1,373, which is your, how much insulation comes in in a day, multiply it by the percentage of insulation that's, you know, that's actually hitting the earth. So to figure that out, you take 100 minus our A, which is insulation reflected back into space or scattered by particles. Our B, which is insulation absorbed by water molecules and clouds. And our C, insulation reflected by Earth's surface. And you need to use these as whole numbers. I know they give them, probably give them to you as percentages, but the formula I'm using, use the whole numbers, it'll put, turn it into percentages, okay? And then you'll divide whatever you get once you do all the subtracting by 100. And you'll get the amount of radiation. So if we did that for the average numbers, so with A being 26, B being 19, C being 4, we'll get 700.23 700 watts per meter squared. Now. If we change how much insulation is reflected by the Earth's surface, say we had more ice caps or we had um, more glaciers, 
to 10. How is that going to change what we get? So redoing the math, we get 617.85 watts per meter squared. Make enough sense? If you have questions on that, please shoot me a question in the comments. I encourage it. I might not know everything about this subject, but I know enough that I can probably answer what you're going to ask me. So please ask me if you need help. Have a good one, guys.